Today, I'm going to show you how to use focus bracketing with the Canon EOS R7. But before we do so, I want to tell you about our sponsor, Artlist. If you're creative like myself on YouTube or even have a large production company, you're going to need stock assets such as music, sound effects, and footage. And Artlist is the best place to get that. With different plans stemming from just music to Artlist Max with everything you need, Artlist is the place to go. If you want to get two months for free on your annual subscription, check out the link below. Thank you to Artlist for supporting the channel and back to the video. First off, let's turn on the camera and make sure that we're in manual mode. So switch the dial to the M mode. Then we're going to go into the menu and go to the six tab over in the red menu. So right over here. Now you'll see in the bottom, there's an option for focus bracketing. So what we're going to do is go into this item, turn it on by hitting enable. And then we're going to go down to depth composite and hit enable just like that. Okay, now it should take 100 photos and automatically stitch them together. So let's test that out. We just have our subject here and we're just going to take a photo. So now it's taking the photos one at a time after it took a burst of about the first 30 photos or so. Now it's currently set to take 100 photos at once, but because its buffer can't handle all 100 photos, it's slowly taking them. If you want to shorten up that amount of time, you can change that in the settings that I just showed you. So you can change it from 100, maybe down to 20, 25 or so, and you might get better results from moving subjects. Whereas right now with a still subject, 100 photos is just fine. It just takes a little bit of time. Now the other thing while it's still doing this is to make sure the camera stays stationary. So if the camera's moving a bunch, it's not gonna work very well because it has to stitch them all together again. And some of the applications you can use this for are maybe landscape photography or maybe macro photography. If you have a macro lens and wanna get a perfectly in-depth shot of a smaller subject, basically for the extreme end of things. You're not going to be using this for portrait photography, but basically for small items like maybe this lens or larger things like a landscape where you want everything in focus at once. It doesn't take these as raw photos. It compiles it all into one JPEG, so you lose raw control. So make sure to set your settings perfectly right when you're taking the photo because you can't edit like white balance and exposure in post without distorting the image a little bit. Um, now it's going to be processing this photo. It'll take a little bit. This is a great option if you want to have macro shots or stuff like that and you want to have focus stacking without needing to do it in the external software. I can tell oh, it's just done, but I can take this photo see what it looks like. There we go. And I can just export this to my phone and use it right away and I don't have to do any post processing on it. And as you can see, when we zoom into this photo, it's a very sharp photo all the way across the board for the entire image. This is again, a great option for product photography or for landscapes. That's gonna be it for today's video. If you have any ideas for any future videos or tutorials, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you wanna help support the channel, please consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and following me on the other social media platforms. That's it for today's video and I'll see you in the next video.